Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're looking at a watch from Jung Hans with the Max Bill Automatic Black Strap and Sapphire Crystal. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldassar.com as a full authorized dealer. So in this video, deep dive on this timepiece, final points of consideration at the end, but also throughout this video, if you have further questions, check out the link in the description down below where you can learn more information, purchase the watch, and book a time with one of our dedicated watch specialists as well. But guys, let's jump into the video, take a closer look at this watch. When I first got into watches, Jung Hans Max Bills were some of the pieces that really captured my attention. I was enthralled by the minimalist design and how they felt and looked on the wrist, ultimately leading to me purchasing one myself. And in 2020, when the latest Max Bill automatics were released with Sapphire Crystals, I was really excited to get my hands on them. I think that was one of the main points of contention for collectors unsure about the plexiglass options for their day-to-day -day lifestyle. But with these new versions and with this one here kind of falling in line with that traditional max bill design, I think you have a combination of two components that I think are going to bring people together to really look at this piece maybe differently than they would have in the past. And for this particular version, we have a silver dial, the Arabics, and a date. Let's take a closer look. Taking a look at the Maxville Automatic here, we have a very restrained case that measures at 38 millimeters in diameter, coming in at 37.8 millimeters when measuring across actually exactly with calipers, with a case height of 9.8 millimeters and a lug to lug distance coming just a shade under 40 millimeters. This model certainly exhibits Bauhaus inspired minimalist characteristics that are familiar with the Jung Hans catalog, in which a smaller case utilizes more dial real estate and strips away much visible case area. The small case lugs make this an ideal fit for smaller wrists, especially under 15 centimeters. Also though, I think larger wrists can pull this style off. Given the sub 40 millimeter lug to lug or just around that dimension, it might scare some people away. But given that dial to bezel ratio, the curvature of that crystal, as well as just how that dial is going to almost optically jump out at you, this one does wear pretty true to size in some instances while not having the risk of overhang for literally any wrist out there. For this model, we also are going to get the inclusion of a dome crystal, this one being of the sapphire variety. So what we've seen recently and what we've actually been offering on our site was sapphire retrofits on some of the other models. But now Jung Hans has just seen the popularity and demand for some of these models to uh, exhibit this sapphire crystal that they've started to offer it right off the bat uh, for many of their models. This I think is going to help a lot of people get over the edge. And I think they did a nice job with mirroring the type of charm that comes with that vintage hue of plexiglass crystals, which I think people undersell in a way. I think everyone's just thinking about versatility, durability, and they don't think about of why an acrylic might it actually just looks superior. They did a nice job getting those looks with a sapphire. I wouldn't say it has the same type of vintage charm, but it is very close. And I think it's going to really help a lot of people get over the edge with this piece. Also, when talking about that crystal and speaking to the thickness, still getting a very thin wash here. This is a conventional dress wash, 9.8 millimeters in thickness, slide it underneath any dress cuff that you throw at it. A small push-pull crown is lined at the three o'clock position and operates the automatic caliber inside. Despite its small size, winding the movement in the first position presents very little problem. It might be a concern for those with larger fingers, for example, just because it is on the smaller end of things. Uh, the second position, you then can adjust the date. At the farthest position, you then can adjust the time while stopping the second hand in the process, so hacking seconds here. The small case leans into a dressy, minimalist execution with a polished finish applied to all visible surfaces, including the small angular lugs. In terms of construction, the steel case body makes up a little more than half of the overall case height coming in at roughly 5.2 millimeters, essentially putting the watch in an ultra thin category if it wasn't for that dome sapphire crystal on top. The result of combining the thin case and the boxy crystal is a bezel-less design. The crystal appears to be seated on top of the side of the case, and therefore, when you are viewing the watch on the wrist, you see just the very edge or lip of the case and the lugs extending just a few millimeters from the bottom. While this might seem like a simple visual achievement, it's actually the result of some sophisticated case design. One good example of this construction complexity is the way the lugs jettison from the inward angled surface at the back half of the case, which allows enough clearance for the straight pin 20 millimeter leather strap attachment to fit perfectly in that space. If the case had flatter surfaces in this area, the lugs would have to extend further out and then the dynamic of the aesthetic and the wearing experience would certainly change. 
The strap here is a black genuine leather strap. It is going to be thin. There's no padding whatsoever. It has a thin calfskin underside that is going to be soft and supple. Do not see a good amount of break in on this one. It's going to certainly do the job. Maybe not the most premium strap that you're going to find, uh, but certainly a nice level up from many in the price category of just around $1,000. One point when looking at the max bills and that 20 millimeter lug width, is going to be the versatility. I have found that these watches really accept straps in a great way. This dial is incredibly versatile and almost doesn't get credit for it. You do have a signed 18 millimeter buckle on the reverse end on that strap. So if you do wanna keep that, definitely keep that in mind when looking at other third party options. So now when looking at this dial, let's speak to some of the elements of this dial and why I really enjoy it. First off, when looking at the design, you are getting a kind of illusion effect with how the dial is positioned and tapers back at the outside perimeter. It almost mirrors exactly what's happening with the crystal, and I think that just allows the central point of the dial surface to really pop out at you, especially when you're looking at this numeral version. It does just really allow you to read the time with great legibility. Along that outside edge, you have some additional space, and then you find these numerals that are going to mark the every five minutes. Inside there, you have linear markings for the minute track and longer ones for those corresponding hours. At the inward portion right from there, you also are going to get some larger numerals, which I think is one of the coolest typography sets you're going to find in a dress watch. It has this almost futuristic look, but also very classic look at the same time. Also, you are getting some loom plots at the quarter markings. A double plot is going to be at the 12 o'clock position for orientation. At the center, simple, stick pencil style hands with some loom also in the center. Loom is not gonna be of the greatest variety here and of the greatest surplus. It really is only going to help with orientation. Simple dial text is going to be exhibited at the 12 o'clock position with Jung Han's automatic. And you also are getting a date window. One thing I will say about the date, some people are not going to like the idea of having a date window on this watch. In this instance, I think they did a nice job with the date disc actually matching that of the dial surface and the color, while also matching the numeral in how it looks and the size to the other numerals. On this numeral version, I do not mind it because it doesn't feel like it clashes the same way. The position as well as the size of the numeral itself feels like when you have it at the three, it looks like if it was a three on the dial. So I think it just simply works in this instance. But this is a dial design that is simple in some ways, but also it does have some things going on. And with that subconscious feeling of how this isn't really overbearing in many instances, despite there being some good you know, amount of indications on the dial. I think that just speaks to the design, the use of negative space. And this is gonna be a design style that some are going to maybe say is pretty sterile, but I just think it works. I like the look, and it probably is the epitome of doing this design well for the price range. Now flipping this watch over, we do have a screw down solid case back that's going to exhibit four screws that need to be unscrewed to access the movement. It does achieve 30 meters of water resistance, so pretty much know the deal there. This is not going to be anything that's going to take on the aquatic lifestyle, but inside, you have the ETA 282042. It's a four hertz, 28,800 vibrations per hour movement with a 38 hour power reserve, hacking and hand winding here. Again, hacking, stopping the second hand when you pull the crown to the farthest position. And when speaking to the ETA 2824, you really can't find a more ubiquitous movement out there on the market. It really sets the standard for what an entry level Swiss automatic should be. And this comes with that uh, reliability, serviceability. I think this is a great movement to find in this price range, no nonsense around it. And also, is able to achieve this thin case profile that this watch does have, uh, which I think is very nice. In terms of accuracy, this is a standard grade, but I find that these are running around plus or minus eight to 10 seconds a day on average. Some are going to do much better, but just to give a conservative estimation, usually that's where I find many of these max bills uh, testing at uh, when uh, doing some uh, anecdotal testing uh, for myself. All right, so now to unpack looking at this Junghans max bill automatic with a sapphire crystal. So let's first discuss the idea of design. Now design is going to be the most subjective aspect to this watch, so we'll just speak to that first. You're either going to like what this watch is going for or you're not gonna like what this watch is going for. When Max Bill, the famous Swiss designer, made these wall clocks back in the mid 20th century, you could see how a lot of those original designs were eventually adapted into these wristwatches, and I think they work. It almost it gives off that feel with the legibility, how it's almost coming off the wall on, say, how this was displayed originally. And that design, I think, just works when you have it strapped to the wrist. Some people are just gonna say this is a sterile design and not for them, but others, I think, that in, appreciate what this design and the history behind this piece 
are going to really look at this for what it is, one of the true representations of Bauhaus principles in a wristwatch. Size is also going to be a favor for many people out there. While not really wearing so small, even with that lug-to-lug -lug dimension, the Max Bill is one of those watches that doesn't really wear like anything else, just given the profile of the dial itself, the crystal, and just the optical appearance of the dial when seated within. Movement is no nonsense. You don't get any exhibition case back, but this is a pretty bare bones movement, so really not much to look at here. Some people with larger wrists might be concerned here. I wouldn't say it's going to be the largest watch, but again, just given the optics of how this dial presents itself, it does wear a little bit larger without ever having any risk of overhang. So simply put, if you're looking for a dress watch for around $1,000, now with the Sapphire Crystal, so that idea of durability is now thrown out the window, I think this is a great one to look for if this design style speaks to you. If it doesn't, look in another direction. But if you like the way that this looks, if it's just pleasing to your eye, you can't really describe it, I understand where you're coming from because I felt the same way when looking at this watch for the first time. And if that is you, I certainly would give this one a shot. All right, guys, well, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon when future content uh, is posted. Also, if you're in the market for this watch, check it out on teddybaldesser.com. We're a full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, also offer a full factory warranty for all of the new products that we carry and a new pre-owned section as well, where we have some of the best and curated watches authenticated by our team and tested in-house. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.